everybody and welcome to this video where apparently for this news and another story I've had my head up my ass for like a month and had no idea that this shit was going down. The YouTube algorithm has betrayed me and not given me the information and since the only thing I've been looking at is stuff about Mar-a-Lago and CM Punk. That's been my news feed. So the question is, what's going on with Barnes and Noble? Am I right? What's going on with it? Where do I even start? I have so much to say about this that I am going to have to watch someone else's video and take little moments. I'm pissed off and I wanna fucking scream, but um, we're just gonna let some other person say things at me. Cause just in case you don't know, I watched a ridiculous amount of videos late last night about this topic and the Department of Justice versus Penguin Random House, which again, I had no idea was fucking happening. And it's really hard to get any information about this stuff because every single fucking person that's doing videos on it, for the most part, their videos clock in. I think the shortest one I found on the first page of it was like 38 minutes, but some of them are an hour or two hours long. And when you're just trying to get some fucking information, that's too long. But people are very upset about it. So, let's start with the B and N. First off, maybe the reason why I didn't hear about this is because it's about children's and middle grade books. And YouTube knows that I'm not a childrin. And so they're like, you, you will not care about this, sir. But because um, so many people on BookTube who are in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s read children's books, um, this was a big fucking deal. And I'm not trying to downplay this, but the privilege and entitlement of a lot of people are kind of laughable. So basically, Barnes & Noble hired this dude who saved the UK Waterstones from fucking bankruptcy. So they had him come over to look at shit and say, how do we fix Barnes & Noble? Because they would only hire him if Barnes & Noble was on the verge of collapse. That's the part that none of these fucking idiots understand. Okay? Somebody doesn't hire someone like him unless it's, like, threat-level midnight. Okay? They just, they're like, oh, what a fucking bunch of assholes cutting off our fucking middle grade fucking legs. What the fuck? So the new edict at Barnes and Noble is they're only going to carry the one to 2% of bestsellers in middle grade and children's book in hardcover. That's, that's what the uproar is about. Okay. Now me giving my bitch about the publishing industry is gonna have to come at a later date. Me giving my bitch about why hardcovers are still the first published way to go, it's archaic, it's fucking stupid, whatever. Um, that shouldn't be a thing, that's for another video too. But the reason why this is, in case none of these people understand this, hardcover sales at Barnes & Noble have been dropping the last quarter, they dropped over 12%. The returns that Barnes & Noble have to send back to the publishers is 80%. 80% of the books that are on these shelves that these people are bitching about have to go back. Okay? So, there are a lot of other problems here that we're going to hit. But one of them is, this has obviously been a problem, okay? Why was no one trying to fix that problem before? Why weren't the authors trying to fix that problem before? 
Why weren't Barnes & Noble trying to fix that problem before? Why weren't the publishers trying to fix this problem before? Newsflash, according to the DOJ trial, um, the publishing industry doesn't fucking know what they're doing under oath. Okay? If they don't know what they're doing, guessing Barnes & Noble, since they are their funnel, for the most part, they kind of don't know what they're doing. And if I know anything about authors and why a lot of authors go traditional as opposed to self-published, they don't do anything because they're horrible business people. We all are. It's fine. We don't need to like be scared about it. We don't need to lie about it. They will carry the hardcover books if those books can prove that they can sell. So where would this proving ground be? Well, the proving ground would be online because all of these books that these people are saying you can't get, you can get online at barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com. And this is the funny thing. Barnes and Noble is wanting all of these people to, they're, they're wanting authors to push their fan base to go to the Barnes and Noble site do the pre-orders and order the book online if that does well they will carry those books in the store but the only like actual numbers that they're going to be going off of is off of barnesandnoble.com so let's think about this for a minute and think about like not right now but like long term why would this even be a thing in any kind of business there is something that marketing people have to do and that is to train your audience to do things a certain way if you need them to change their behavior, okay? This is true for any kind of fucking, through commercials, through email marketing, whatever. If you need your customers to do something different, you must train them to do those things to where it becomes second nature. So what... Barnes & Noble, I'm guaranteeing this right now, what Barnes & Noble is hoping, what this dude from Waterstones is hoping, that these authors are going to be so pissed that the prestige of having their fucking books face out on a Barnes & Noble shelf will get them to rally their fan base to order these books online. If that happens in great numbers, they will carry them in the store. But why is this important? Because Barnes & Noble is wanting their customers to start shopping on their website. Barnes & Noble's whole thing was they were, they were the big bookstore, okay? When we were having like Barnes & Noble do battle with Borders and all the other smaller chains that Barnes & Noble's put out of business, this was like a big thing. But then when Amazon came along, Amazon was the big thing. And Barnes & Noble became the weak little like, oh no. So the one thing that Barnes & Noble had that Amazon didn't have was the in-store, beautiful Starbucks drinking experience. You can't get that from Amazon. The problem here now is that's not enough, okay? so. Amazon or Barnes and Noble, they are going to have to close a bunch of stores. As, like, especially if they're like taking losses every quarter. Okay. So they're hoping that you will order through Barnes and Noble and not order through Amazon, which everyone's going to fucking do because that is familiar to them. So that will be the thing that Barnes and Noble is fighting an uphill battle trying to get book people to not order on Amazon, but order on Barnes and Noble, okay? Like, I honestly think Barnes and Noble's mindset is the book talk, bookstagram, book Twitter, I guess even booktube for that matter, that the target audience for these middle grade books is all around here. So, they also know that the people who buy these books are loud as shit. 
And when they don't like something, they're going to fucking yell and scream. So if they yell and scream, the authors yell and scream, everybody yells and screams. They're hoping that they will take these sales that they would normally get maybe in the store. And we'll talk about that in a minute and move them over to the Internet. That the outrage will be enough. See, Barnes & Noble is banking on your outrage. That's what's so fucking stupid about this whole thing. Okay, so that happens. But what they don't understand is that if we've learned anything from Marvel fucking comics, online outrage does not transfer to fucking, like, uptick, huge upticks in sales. It doesn't. Like, it just... Ugh. So maybe the privileged middle grade readers of America can save Barnes and Noble right now. I think that's what this dude's fucking hoping, but let's keep going because the video I'm watching is only two minutes in of 25 and I have a lot more to say. Here's another thing in this video that I'm watching here off to the side that you guys can't see because I feel kind of weird about putting someone else's video up here, even though that would probably be really good. I don't know what I... What do you guys think about that? Is that okay? I think these um, millennials and Gen Zers or Zygotes or whatever the fuck they are, um, I think their use being in the TikTok realm, being used to reaction videos and shit like that. And I think um, people in older generations are terrified of shit like that. But I think people that are young get off on that kind of shit. So let me know in the comments down below what, if that's okay. So her argument here is, is that this one author who's won many awards, the fourth book in her series is not gonna be available in Barnes and Noble as a hardcover. So what does this tell you? Okay, this tells you that the first three books did not sell as well as they are trying to say it did. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Well, if they're only carrying the one or two percent, then that book, her books must not be in the one or two percent. Bottom line. Okay. Next, it won awards. What does that tell you? It tells you awards actually don't fucking mean shit. Like, we've been over this. Awards are just marketing tools. If the marketing tools don't work, it doesn't fucking matter. I'll do a whole video on fucking awards and shit because that's something that's pissed me off for years and I've talked about this for fucking ever. So it's just, it's fucking funny that this person, and okay, and I'm not fucking singling this chick out. The only reason why I'm using her video is because she has her video chopped up and broken down in very specific points. Whereas everybody else does videos like me where they just fucking yell at the fucking clouds until they fucking run out of space. Okay. So, but her sentiments are fucking loud and crazy. It's almost like somebody wrote a script for white chicks with booktube channels and book talks and bookstagrams and book twitters and all this other fucking shit and said these are the things that you need to talk about these are the bullet points um oh and if you can um get like emotional down here at this part that would be fucking amazing that would be great um and i can't wait to get to the part where they call me a racist for disagreeing with them so we'll get to that in a second okay here's another thing this chick says they are waiting for the books. Okay, so they're going to put the 1% to 2% of hardcovers up. After that, they're going to wait to see, like, they'll carry the books when they go into paperback. But what she's saying is sometimes it takes a year or two for those books to come out. That's fucking true. You want to know why? Because the publishing industry doesn't fucking know what they're doing. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyone who's been taking self-publishing seriously has known this for fucking like at least 10 years, if not more. Cause like, I mean, we all knew in the nineties and two thousands that the publishing industry didn't know what the fuck they were doing, but eBooks hadn't fucking taken off yet. So when, once eBooks took off and we had the Kindle gold rush and all that shit, 
we then had like tangible proof, meaning money, that, oh yeah, this is how you fucking sell books. I I'm a dumb fuck. How the hell can I do this? But these big five fuckers, actually then it was big six, and maybe by the end of the month or next month, it'll be the big four. So who fucking knows? But we all knew that the publishing industry didn't know how to fucking sell books, okay? Their whole fucking mindset is fucking ass backwards. Okay, here we go. If Barnes & Noble is only going to put out the top 1% to 2% of hardcover books for middle grade, this is going to shut out marginalized creators. That's the argument now. Now, this is really a touchy subject because people get fucking mad and they get crazy about this. And because I'm a white dude, I'm not allowed to have an opinion on this. Because if I do have an opinion on it, it's and it's not what they're saying it should be, I'm a fucking racist. That is not fucking true. Okay? Yes, if you're only taking Harry Potter and some other stupid fucking book, it's going to hurt marginalized creators. It's also going to hurt non-marginalized creators. It's going to hurt creators. Like, definitely. But, Barnes & Noble, last I checked, didn't have a fucking UNICEF sign on the fucking door. Okay? Barnes & Noble is not a fucking charity. They are a fucking business. And since we live in this fucking capitalistic society that we fucking live in, and you want to sell fucking books, you have to play by their fucking rules. You don't have to fucking sell your books at Barnes & Noble. You can sell your books anywhere. You could be self-published. Okay? You don't have to sign a traditional publishing deal. What Barnes & Noble is hoping is going to happen is that all creators, all authors, marginalized authors and not, start picking up the fucking slack on marketing why the fuck should they be selling or attempting to sell a shit ton of books that nobody's promoting? How do I know no one's promoting it? Because 80% of the books get shipped back to the fucking publisher. That's ridiculous. Businesses have closed down for like better fucking percentages than that. This is absolutely bonkers. The entitlement. Okay, we'll start with entitlement first. A lot of these people are getting pissed because they're not going to see their book on a fucking Barnes & Noble shelf. That's bothering them. The other thing that's bothering them is that sweet, sweet hardback money that they're not going to get now from Barnes & Noble, from the store, which when you think about it, they weren't getting any way if they're sending back 80% of their books. So that's probably more of a fallacy than anything else. And honestly, since what we've learned in the DOJ thing, that only like 2% of authors actually make their advance back and start actually making money on the royalties, they, these authors, aren't even making money on the books sold at Barnes & Noble anyway. And if they do get a royalty check, it is slim. So, what is the actual problem here? What is the bitch? The bitch that will come up will be people not being able to see themselves on a cover of a book. This is a representation thing. And there is something that all these people have missed about the actual policy of Barnes & Noble, which is Barnes & Noble stores all across the country, their management is now able to order books that they think will sell in their communities. So the plus side of this is, is that now you don't have some fucking corporate fucking white dude in an ivory fucking tower telling people in fucking Missoula or Oklahoma City or fucking New Orleans or LA what fucking books that they should be selling to their customers. Now, 
is this going to work? I have no idea. In theory, this sounds really fucking good. Because honestly, like, okay, I have to share a bit of my experience. When I was making films and getting my films out and my films distributed, so the first, no, it wasn't my first movie. It was the first movie I made, but it was the second one that came out. Um, I did a movie called Creep Creeper Since Frankenstein. When that came out, um, the distributor, um, I think, made 3,000 units, like 3,000 individual DVDs. Shockingly, um, those pre-orders from the stores, like Walmart and shit like that, sold out. So the distributor like wrote me and they were excited i was excited and then walmart walmart ordered six thousand more units the following week and i don't even think the movie had come out yet this was just all pre-order shit so we got fucking totally excited and because if you know how i make fucking chat books and how i make make cereals I made movies like that too. So I had, and it wasn't going to be like this forever, but I had a backlog, but I was coming out with a movie every month. Creep Creeper since Frankenstein. And then the next month was supposed to be a movie called he, and the following month was a movie called the corporate cutthroat massacre. Now there was a shipping ordering snafu and he got pushed back because of whatever. So it came out the week before Corporate Cutthroat Massacre. Because even though like the distribution fucked up my second film, like release date, because of how things are ordered, they can't push my other movie back. Or maybe they could, they said they couldn't. So they were putting two movies out of mine for like like $17 DVDs like back to back which I'm like this is going to kill me and because the Frankenstein movie did so well orders were up for he and for um, Corporate Cutthroat Massacre so I'm thinking that this is all great but what happened there was no way Walmart was going to be able to sell over 6,000 copies of Frankenstein and there was no way I was going to be able to get my fan base to go out and buy He and Corporate Cutthroat Massacre a week apart. Like, they would probably pick one. Some might get both. But, like, we're dealing with people's wallets here. Like, what? how much disposable income do they have? So, Walmart sent a shit ton back. And however this works out in fucking, like economics and fucking I, I have no, I still don't understand how this worked my royalty that I was going to get for all of these DVDs was going to be a pretty decent amount somehow when all of those orders got shipped back I got billed I didn't even get paid I got billed by my distributor how does this work this is how this works. If you guys remember in the 90s, I think it was the 90s, there was a um, filmed uh, company called Tempe Films. And they put out not great movies, but super low budget horror movies. Walmart put them out of business for ordering heavy and then returning all the product when it didn't sell. And they wouldn't give it a large window. It's like, okay, this needs to sell in like two weeks or else we're getting rid of all of it. Because Walmart doesn't want to just leave shit on the shelves if it's not selling. They got shelf space to fill. They, they have new product coming in. And these people don't understand how this fucking works. It's very fucking upsetting. So basically, for these people who don't know, for these authors who have no fucking idea, it is actually worse to have your books shipped back to the publisher. What does that tell the publisher? When the publisher's sitting there and they get boxes and boxes and boxes of unsellable books from this one author, what's it going to tell them? Ooh. 
let's not extend that contract for so-and-so, okay? This is not a bad thing. It sounds awful. But if this doesn't happen in two or three years, there might not be an actual Barnes & Noble store for you to have your books inside of. The only reason why Barnes & Noble would do something like this and bring this dude in from Waterstones is if they were in fucking trouble. And in trouble means on the verge of closing stores. Are, are you following this yet? What chance does a debut author have at getting their book seen? Is this debut author marketing their book? Is this debut author, like, busting their ass making sure their book sells? No, because they got an advance, and they're not going to make any money on the fucking royalties anyway, because it'll never pay out the advance. This whole industry is a fucking shit show. There's no incentive for people to work hard to sell their book because they already got their advance, and there's no way they're going to fucking... I, I just want to say try harder. Like, do you want somebody to just, like... I'm just going to sit here and have somebody do all my shit. Like, oh, it's so fucking annoying. Oh. Okay, this whole thing about... And especially when someone who's, like, 22 years old is talking about how browsing in a brick-and-mortar store is the most important thing about a brick-and-mortar store and that browsing on the internet, people don't know how to do that. What the fuck are you talking about? Of course people know how to browse on the fucking internet. Is she worried about her grandma not being able to find a fucking middle grade book? What the fuck is happening right now? Okay, she says she loves browsing through the store, laps around the store before she picks her books, okay? Well, she obviously doesn't do it that much because 80% of those books are going back. She obviously is only buying the top 10 middle grade children's books or else this wouldn't be a fucking thing. But this is a thing. There are numbers to prove these things. People could scream and fucking cry about this all they fucking want. But if the numbers are saying no one is buying these books and all of these books are going back to the publishers and the publishers are going, I don't know if I want to renew this person's contract. I would rather my books sell well, not caring where the fuck it is, than having my book on a bookshelf at a fucking store and not be able to put another book out. Whether it, oh my fucking God. If we're talking about the one to two percent of books being white, red, or, and white, red, that's what she fucking said. Okay, she basically means written by fucking white people with a cast full of white people. This is bothering this white girl, okay? And here's the thing. I appreciate you. I'm on your fucking side. I really am, okay? But business is business. Art is art. And in this analogy, I'm saying middle grade books are art. That's fine. The publishing industry, since it started, and we've talked about this just recently, is a fucking racist fucking vehicle. And yes, in more recent years, they've been doing a better job of putting people in positions that um, aren't white dudes, whatever. This obviously hasn't been enough to change sales. So all these people who bitch on fucking TikTok, who bitch on Instagram, who bitch on fucking YouTube and say all this shit and are pissed off about how everything's working, if you're not voting with your wallet, no one cares. Nothing will change unless you put your money where your fucking mouth is. This is not hard. You could call anyone you want a racist. You could fucking yell and scream saying that this is privilege and all this other fucking shit. 
But if you are not paying for books with the money that you have, your argument will never fly. This isn't like, it's not like we vote for who's going to run Penguin. You know, like, they are a fucking corporation. All they want is our money. If you are not giving them your money, they're going to be like, oh, this whole diversity thing we've been working on the past six years really hasn't been paying off. Huh. Or you could even say it's them going, hey, you know what? Let's fuck this whole diversity thing. And all the people of color authors we have, let's not put any money in marketing them and watch them fall on their faces. That'll be funny, right? Even if that's their fucking plan, you buying their books could defeat that plan. But if you are not purchasing their books, which you obviously haven't been, or else they wouldn't be dropping 12% in a quarter and sending 80% of the books back. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you do not buy the books, the books will not be carried. It's fucking very, very simple. Okay, she just fucking said the same thing. Oh, so she's saying like New York Times bestsellers is how you get to be in the one to 2% of a fucking thing at Barnes and Noble. So how do you do that? Well, New York Times uses pre-sales and first week sales to determine a bestseller list. Pre-orders and first week sales. Okay. So so how do we get these books discovered? Pre-sales, pre-orders. Okay. So how do people pre-order? Fucking online. Or they go into... This is so fucking stupid. I can't believe people still do this. I'm going to drive to Barnes & Noble to go in and ask them to order a book that I could get on Amazon and have it at my house tomorrow morning. Fucking stupid. But this is how you do it. You pre-order books and those pre-order sales determine if a book is successful or not. According to New York Times, it's about damn time. To be honest, if a book has no marketing behind it, the first week that book comes out, who the fuck is even gonna know that it's on the shelves at Barnes & Noble? Like, yeah, I guess like maybe, I'm being generous here, maybe three to 5% of first week book sales are because someone just happened to see a book and was like, oh, I'll pick this up. I'm pretty sure most people who go to Barnes & Noble already know what they're looking for when they go there. Like, yeah, people browse, but they're usually there for a certain thing. And anything else they get is just like, oh, that's nice. And I agree that if your book isn't there, how could someone buy it if they if they don't know about it? But if they don't know about it, this isn't a Barnes & Noble problem. This is your fucking publisher's problem because they don't know how to market a fucking book. Like, just having your book on a shelf is not a fucking... Like a genie in a lamp. If it was, they wouldn't be sending 80% of the fucking books back. Okay, and this chick, she's an author. This other chick I'm watching right here. And she's saying it's crazy for people who don't think that this is going to affect authors, especially debut authors and marginalized authors. If this is your bitch, you need to take this up with your publisher. Barnes & Noble is just a fucking bookstore. They are a business. They, they do not owe you shit. Your publisher should be marketing your book better. That is the group you need to fucking go after. Because I fucking guarantee you, if Barnes & Noble starts telling the fucking big five or big two, whoever's left, that um, we're not carrying hardcovers anymore, so if you want new books to sell, they need to be in paperback, Guess what they're going to fucking do? Start making fucking paperbacks. Because they have money to make back now. Okay? But the flip side of this is, and probably why you're pissed off, is the commission you're going to get from that paperback is garbage compared to what you would get from a hardcover. But since most of you don't ever earn your advances out anyway, what the fuck does it matter? Second... I mean, I guess in the grand scheme of things, you're like, wow, it's going to take me that much longer 
to um, earn my advance out. It will. Like, it'll probably never happen. And it will probably never happen, not because of your book, the quality of the book, or anything like that, but because of the marketing of your fucking publisher and the marketing that you're putting into it yourself. Most people don't know how to browse online. Are you fucking crazy? Have you ever fucking Googled anything in your fucking life? Jesus fucking Christ. Most people don't know how to fucking browse. I think that's the only thing people know how to do online browsing skimming scrolling that is the only thing fucking people know how to do and again if it's that bad on barnes and noble's website barnes and noble needs a more user-friendly website and they're saying this shit that marginalized authors aren't going to have the same reach that white authors do one to two percent is a very small number okay i'm going to go out on a limb and say that there probably are going to be more white authors not allowed in Barnes and Noble than marginalized authors because there's probably just by numbers more white authors okay I feel like the marginalized argument is kind of what Barnes and Noble wanted they want the outrage and no one's going to outrage oh um, white author 17 can't get their book in fucking Barnes and Noble. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, this is such a fucking game. And um, I don't know. The Waterstones guy so far is looking pretty brilliant. But I don't know if he's going to be able to get people off of Amazon and buying books on Barnes and Noble. Okay. So now the problem is that this is affecting YA authors too. And that some YA author went into Barnes and Noble to buy 10 copies of her book. Okay, first off, that's hysterical. Let's just take a moment and bask in that. And that someone's going to go, it's it's so she could get her, like, because she had to sign books or send them. Dude, you can get them from the publisher for, like, almost nothing. So if she's just trying to, like, boost her numbers or whatever. Second... So she goes to order 10 copies of her book and there, there weren't 10 copies there. And the guy at Barnes and Noble's like, well, we're only allowed to carry five. And if you want 10, we can order another five because the five that they had there, they still had there because no one was buying her fucking book. Hysterical. Okay. Again, like Barnes and Noble is not a TARDIS. Okay. Barnes and Noble is not the big red bus in spice world okay there is a finite amount of space inside of barnes and noble for storing books they cannot have hundreds of copies of every book that ever fucking existed are you fucking kidding me the only people that are talking like that sound privileged and sound fucking entitled are these fucking authors jesus fucking christ okay this other author is pissed because they've been working for 10 years on their ya book and getting in this industry and now knowing that their book in hardcover will not be in a barnes and noble is a slap in the face First fucking world problems if I ever fucking heard it. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, my fucking God. A slap in the face. Bitch, you are fucking... You have a book deal with Disney? And you're worried about being slapped in the face because your book isn't on a shelf at Barnes & Noble? Fuck me, dude. Oh, my fucking God. Hey, guess what? I'm gonna let you guys in on a little something. I'm an Amazon best-selling author. My, my books really aren't anywhere. This other person won a Newbery Award and was a New York Times bestselling author. My guess in a bundle pack, but, you know, whatever. Um, and they're not popular enough to be in the 1% to 2%. Okay, so let's look at the math here again, because apparently all of these lit majors failed math. 1% to 2% of everything. Are you in that? No. Okay, 
How do you know you're not in that? Because you're not fucking filthy fucking rich. That's how you know you're not in that. If um, you don't have uh, an accountant to handle all of your finances, you're not in the 1% to 2% of authors to be able to sell books at Barnes & Noble in hardcover as they come out. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. I hate math, but math is pretty much factual. There's no there's no wiggle room in math unless the person doing it is fudging stuff and that's that's a different thing cuz that's not math. That's criminality. But dude, a 12% over 12% drop in a quarter and having to send 80% of the books back that like you can't make that go away. You can make Barnes and Noble go away by making them feel like they need to keep doing this or wanting them to keep doing this. And then there's no Barnes and Noble. These fucking people. There is a good point going on here that if um, Barnes and Noble is trying to be just like a, like a top 10 bookseller kind of thing, like where they only carry super popular books that's the same thing that Target and Walmart are and people and Costco for that matter and people are going to go to Target, Walmart and Costco if the same books they could get at Barnes & Noble are there because they can also get a shovel and um, I don't know Burger King there's Burger King in some places Costco has hot dogs you know so if that is the goal of Barnes & Noble, which I don't think it is at all, because I don't think bringing someone in from England who saved fucking Waterstone is going to fucking go, hey, let's be like Walmart, except we only sell books. So we're only aisle J29, but, but we have a Starbucks over there. So fucking stupid. This whole thing about I've been working on my middle grade book for years and I'm not going to be able to see it on a shelf and I'm sad. If you want to see your book out there, then fucking market your book. Jesus fucking Christ. Publishing houses are not fucking shooting stars that you get to fucking wish on. Barnes and Noble is not a cake full of fucking birthday candles. Oh. This is the shit. This is the fucking shit. People are using this to be racist or say racist things. So let's see what racist thing they said. Okay, I'm going to read this apparently racist comment somebody left. Okay? And I'm assuming... the I can't tell what the race of the person saying the comment is. But it's a quote tweet to a Kelly Yang um, video. So here it is. Th this is this horrible racist tweet. Publishing industry is a sinking ship. Woman YA authors reduced to begging on camera. Those, sh those shelf spots are not coming back. You will never beat Harry Potter. Fuck, dude. That's some fucking hardcore racist shade right there. I don't know why that's racist. Um, is it because they brought up Harry Potter and J.K. Rowling is kind of questionable at the moment? Just because somebody disagrees with somebody or even says a stupid fucking tweet like that, which is obviously just a fucking opinion, that doesn't make that tweet racist. Why do people do that? Why do people, like, just jump? This is racist because you said something against a person of color. I want to ask people of color who watch this channel. Do you want people to treat you like you're a little baby and never say anything to challenge you or make you think or expand your mind? Do you want people to handle you with little kid gloves? To me, that's fucking insulting. And I would be pissed. Okay, this is the next. And see, this is why this is considered a racist tweet. Okay, this is by um, Golden Swordsman. At Swordsman Knight on Twitter. This person says, 
This is some incredibly entitlement. So again, when we get so upset about something, we start typing and um, Grammarly is not turned on and everyone's fucked. Um, it says, yeah, no shit. The biggest selling books are going to take priority over some random lady banking purely off her race. The fact that this person said race is going to be the fucking, the whistle that this person's racist. My only fucking complaint for someone being mad about that is, is your whole argument that this is happening to you because you're a marginalized author? Because if that's what you're saying, then, like, what the commenter is saying is accurate but if you have more to your argument as to why this is happening to you then say what that is but at the end of the day like i've already said this is about math this isn't about english this is about math and the numbers show that these books are not selling so they are not going to be carried that's it it's crushing to not be able to see your book in a bookstore. This is so fucking stupid. This is funny. This part, like we're halfway through this video and it says my thoughts. So we're in the my thoughts section. So I don't know what the fuck that first part was because there was a lot of opinions in there. So, okay. She just said, this is putting too much pressure on the people browsing a bookstore. The pressure for a book to sell well lies on the publisher and the author. If the author, and like there's a lot of people who think that we're back in the fucking stone age of fucking printing, where an author can hide in a cave their entire life and never do any social media or interviews or anything like that to promote a book. But obviously these people don't mind trying to promote their book because they're doing all these TikTok videos about their book. So obviously, marketing is something they know how to fucking do. Do they do it well? No, because those books are getting sent back. Pre-orders is how you get your book on the list, and that's what Barnes & Noble looks at to see if they need to take that book and put it on a shelf. They are telling you exactly how to get your book where you want it to be. If you don't think your book's good enough to sell a bunch of pre-orders and be on the New York Times bestseller, then what the fuck are you trying to do this for? Did you want just like a consolation prize? Do you want uh, this whole, like my book's not on a bookshelf. I don't know. Maybe some people's life goals are really fucking low and they just want to see a rectangle with their name on it on a fucking piece of wood with a bunch of other rectangles with people's names on it. It's fucking stupid. Okay, so... This woman has said a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to skip to what can readers do. I already said, you have to vote with your fucking wallet. Um, another thing that you should do if this really fucking bothers you, don't do this to fucking just be like, uh, I don't know, just if this bothers you, go to a library and order the books at the library, Okay. Library sales are more than regular sales. Like, they cost more. And that shows interest in the book from a community level. So do that. Second, pre-order the fucking book. Okay? And you're sitting here saying that, like, you, a uh, adult fucking woman, are mad that you're not going to find your middle grade book. Okay? Now, you know how to make a YouTube video. You know how to TikTok. You know how to do all this shit in Twitter because you've been pulling all this shit up and putting it on your video. So if you have been able to figure this out, I'm assuming other people can figure it out too. And if you're a part of good communities on these social media platforms, you will be able to find, and it looks like you're following all the authors anyway, you're already going to know when these books are coming out. You're going to know when these books are available for pre-order. Whether or not you get to lap around a fucking Barnes & Noble or not. And honestly, you say that you pick up these books and like you spend hours like reading descriptions of new books you've never seen before. 
How many of those do you buy? How many of those are the ones with um, diverse characters on the cover? Probably not that many. How many books do you order from Amazon? You probably order a lot of books from Amazon. That's hurting Barnes & Noble. When Barnes & Noble gets hurt, they have to make drastic decisions. This is so fucking basic. Okay, so this chick is trying to correlate this with books being banned. That's not the case. Okay, so here's the thing. Most kids are not going to be able to afford these hardcovers. So the library is their fucking only hope for a lot of kids. So make sure that the libraries are carrying the books. Most kids are not shopping at Barnes & Noble. Fuck. Barnes & Noble is really expensive. There are so many cheaper fucking ways to get a fucking book. I don't even know what to fucking say about this anymore. This is all about money. If you want Barnes & Noble to be there in a couple years, this something like this has to happen. And it's probably not going to stop at fucking middle grade. It's probably going to go through all the way up. Until... Barnes & Noble is so profitable that they can continue to do this. But I really think this is just them trying to re-educate their shoppers to use their website to order books. I don't think this is a big of a fucking, like, catastrophic end of the world kind of thing. Just do better. If you, if you want this, if you, if you come from privilege and you have more money than you know what to do with... Go on Barnes & Noble's site and pre-order every fucking hardcover book from a marginalized or debut author. If you're not willing to do that, shut the fuck up and just order the books that you want to order. It's fucking... It's economics. It's it. It's money. That's all it is. Fuck. Hey, keep buying my books. Whoop. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the career of the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.